Welcome to the Aloha Friday Drip, another one. And you know what? Welcome to the new year, you sons of bees, you good-looking sons of bees. We're ready to drop some uh, aloha in your ear. Aloha, some good aloha, <laughs> some energy. Well, yeah, that's the, all, all aloha is good aloha. Yeah, no, some good stuff. We got. I'm really excited about today's episode. Which means this, okay? As we start the new year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know what we're gonna talk about, but it's gonna be good. But I'm gonna tell you right now that if it is good, Jackson, Jackson's here with me. That's me. Jackson, I'm here. What, what should they do? If they gain some some value from this episode. Whether they get value from it or not, we'd appreciate a share. No, but you will. No, the value is going to be guaranteed. If Tyler's here, the value is going to be there. So definitely. Amen. So definitely. No, rate, review, share, uh, comment, wherever it is that you're listening. It's going to help us get to more people. And that's our major goal is to get to as many people as possible. And Absolutely. And, make and an impact. As, yeah, make an, it, the biggest impact as possible. So definitely, the more you rate, review, and share, that helps us with our goal. So we would appreciate it. Speaking of making impact... Uh, we have a big event coming up. It's called the Peak Partnership Event. What's the dates on it? Eighth and ninth. Uh huh. Eighth and ninth. April eighth and ninth. Yep. And Go ahead. And if you have not registered for that, you should register for that event. Not even a question. There'll be. Uh, I'd assume it'll be in Las Vegas at the what's the hotel again? Oh, why am I going blank? Paris, Paris Hotel. The Paris Hotel. And it'll have Ed Milet, E.T. Eric Thomas, whole bunch of industry vets and experts and whether you're looking to invest passively or actively or looking for sponsors operators whatever uh this is the networking event that you want to be at so Definitely. you should register it's going to be uh, huge jay what are we talking about well we'll put the link by the way in the in the show notes well today i kind of want to talk about it's a new year okay everybody gets really really motivated when it comes to a new year right they set all their goals they really motivate themselves they may start a self-help book they may go to a conference and be motivated by something. Um, but that energy and that motivation, it gets fickle. It, it, it sure. kind of sizzles out. So I kind of wanted to talk to you about today. Your energy is always super, super, super high. Well, God bless you, but no, it's not. Well, Dude, when, you, when, you're in the, when you're in the moment, at least it is. Dude, I'm trying to be, but like, I think this is where people fail to, and I know you know this, dude, because yeah. you're in the office, you see it day in, day out. I think people fail to realize, like, Dude, I'm in the grind just like anybody else is. I'm not somebody who just educates about a business. Right. No, I'm somebody who's in the business. Right. I'm you do doing it every day. The business. I yep. think I think people forget that. I know people forget that. They think that life just is just um peachy keen. Dude, no, it's not, man. I get frustrated. I get angry. I drop f bombs. Some loving, some fun, some angry ones. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it happens. You know, they come in all sorts, all varieties, <laughs> all, all varieties. <laughs> but dude, I'll tell you what brings me back and what keeps me grounded. And I, I think that this is important: is that it's it's reminding it's just reminding myself of why we're doing it, man. And we're doing it to make a difference and helping people become better. That motivates me. You know, like like you look at. We had this conversation, we've had this conversation probably, I don't know, I feel like it was a couple months ago, but you go into, you come into the office and you see the people here, you go into the Utah office, you see the people there, you go to events, you see the people there, do people are freaking relying on us to thrive. And uh, that's a huge responsibility, right? Yeah. But, but here's what's interesting, okay? We start the year, we have these huge motivations, these huge goals. And then all of a sudden, why do why does it why does it you know that motivation start to um, fizz out? It's because dude, people start to struggle with it. Pe people feel like they're alone when they're struggling. No. Yeah. Dude, honestly, that means you're in the right spot. Like struggle is normal. Struggle is growth. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was going to say. One of the episodes that me and Dallas did way 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 back, we talked about that. We talked about if you're struggling, that's a great indicator that you're growing. Yeah. If it's hard, that means it's pushing yourself, and that's where you want to be. Oftentimes, like you're saying, it leads people the other way and pushes them away from their goal. Yep. Really, it should motivate you and push you towards your goal because that means you're doing the right thing. That you're means, working yeah, in the right direction. You are working on your goal. People yeah. think that if they're struggling, they're they're not working towards their goal. Nay, dude, if you're struggling, that means you're on the right path, you know? So now the question is, how do you overcome that struggle? And, and if, if you can answer that question, then you'll continue down the path of success, in my opinion. Yeah, so. absolutely. Totally agree. <coughs> so how do you overcome that struggle? Is that the question? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was hoping you would ask me. How do you overcome that? Because <laughs> I know, I, 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 yeah, how do, you overcome, how do you overcome that struggle? I mean, that's a loaded question, right? Yeah. So I don't know why you would ask me such a loaded question, first off. <laughs> Shit, bro. <laughs> 
Uh, it is a lot of question, but Matt, I think that it is, there's a lot of different answers, okay? I'll give you one, and I believe your network, and you'll hear me talk about circle of influence. I've talked about it multiple times on this podcast, but that's why I love our network. That's why I, be I believe your individual network, whatever you know, network you're in, but our network is critical. Like, and and I'll, I'll reference it to multifamily. I believe that one of the most valuable things that people gain by by becoming part of the multifamily mindset is our network because we're all doing it. Mm -hmm. We're all doing it, man. I, and that support is critical. Now the, the key is, are you, are, are you talking about what it's taking on that road to success? You know, are, we talk about Eric, you know, Eric uh -huh. was in here a little bit ago. He was on the podcast and I told him one of the things that I loved about them that is so rare is that they talked about the struggles, not just the successes. Yeah. Yeah. The, here's why that's so critical, man. It's not complaining about the struggles. It's what you've learned from them, right? But people want to, here's why that's important. It's because people want to win, but sometimes they forget how to win. Man, meaning they forget what it takes to win. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Totally. Dude, people, people, it's, people are going to doubt you. People are going to try to take advantage of you. People are going to criticize you. People are going to complain about, you know, whatever you're doing. Dude, it's not about them. It's about you. It's about are you on that path to where you're looking to go? Yeah. So what? So follow up question. Okay. What does it take to win? And I'm hoping that's kind of where this episode will lead. Is what does it take to win? Yeah. When energy. It, what, first yeah, off. Yeah. What does it? What does it take to keep that energy? Energy and perspective. Let's look at this. Okay. Yeah. Those people that we just talked about. Those people that are out there that will criticize you. That will make you feel like you know you're not on that right path. You know they're out there. You've yeah. experienced it. I know you've experienced it. And you know that I've experienced it. We always, we always do. And it's because what we're doing is different, man. And here, here's a, a way to keep that into perspective and make sure that it doesn't derail you, which will obviously help you win if you don't get derailed, is to put it into perspective, a long-term perspective. Like you think of 10 years down the road. You look, at the, you look at their life 10 years down the road. Where are they going to be? And if you can truly, if you define that and you can truly see, you truly see that compared to where you're looking to be 10 years from now, you will not give a shit right. about their opinion. You will not care. So then what do you do? You eliminate that negativity from your life. You eliminate it, man. Eliminate the drama. Is that, it, some people will look at that and be like, what if it's a family member? Eliminate the fucking drama, dude. Yeah. Think yeah. of a sports team. And that might seem dr dramatic, but bear with me as we go, because it is dramatic. Winning, nobody t says winning's easy, right? You right. say what it takes to win. Dude, it takes doing what's necessary to win. Now, eliminating the drama, that means eliminating a family member, a friend. What? Is yeah. that really worth it? Okay, do you think of a sports team? Did you play sports? Yeah, play sports. Uh, I know, I love asking you sports questions. You yeah. always get so offended. Like, of course I play sports, <laughs> you know? Do you know about baseball? Of course I know about basketball. <laughs> think of a sports team, right? Did you have to try out for that sports team? How does that coach pick the players? He has tryouts. And how do they choose? But yes. But how do they choose which players are on the team and which ones aren't? They uh, line them up against each other and pick the best ones. Those who are going to help them do what? What's yeah. the goal of that win. coach? Win. To win. Yeah. So they're going to pick the people that are going to win. If that player doesn't help get you to the championship, their ass doesn't make the team. They don't make the team. Right. But that's that on them, not on you. People will want to make you feel bad for winning. No, no, no. Dude. They want to win too. It's their job to do the things necessary to win, just like it's on you to do the things necessary to win. So life and business, dude, it's hard, man. It's hard enough as it is. Like surround yourself with people who want to win. Look at those people around you, okay? Look at those people on your team, right? And what do they have that you don't have? You should be able to list them off immediately. Do you want to know what, what you, why no, you want to know why you're in my circle? Because what do you have that I don't have? Dude, you have patience, you have love, you have understanding. You do, you have great perspective, dude. And I learn from that every single day. Or you look at the people that are in your inner circle and, and you look at, but, but backtrack though. If those people in your circle and, and you're looking at them and you're like, man, what do they have that you desperately want and you can't name them? They probably don't belong in your circle. And that sounds mean. No, it's not, man. And you should do an internal reflection too on what do you have that other people should want. And if you don't have anything, change it about yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you also look at your inner circle and, you know, do they have things that you want nothing to do with? And maybe you struggle to even find something that you do want that they have and that you can find a lot of things that they have that you do not want. Well, yeah. that person, 
that person is probably somebody who does not belong in your inner circle. You, we talk about inner circle. Is this inner circle in life or are you talking inner circle in business? I want to make sure that that's yes. clear. Yes. Yeah, it's the same shit, dude. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think, but I think most people don't understand that. Like, yeah. I, if you're going to succeed in business, you need people around you that mm-hmm. are, are wanting to help you succeed. If you're going to succeed in life, you need people around you that are going to help you succeed. And oftentimes those are the same people. Yeah. 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 Dude, dude, definitely. Because we spend a lot of time. You know, you think of a business setting, you spend a lot of time together, man. A lot of the times, more than you spend with the people at home. Yes. Yeah. Which is why, you know, I remember Rowan. <laughs> we talk about Rowan. Rowan, if you're listening to this, this is why I love you, man, because you provide great energy. And you look at her episode that she was on. Uh-huh. And she talked about how um, culture trumps uh, strategy all day. That's what she talked about. Right. And I love that because I agree. Culture is key. You want to know why? Because cult- w- 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 how do you define your culture? Well, you first off, you define your culture. You define what that culture is. And if somebody within there does not meet the culture, then they don't meet the culture. Right. Right. You're going to spend a lot of time. Why are you going to try to like bang your head against a brick wall to do that? But I also want to look at the bigger f- perspective there. Okay. Yeah. Because people will listen to that. They'll immediately like get almost offended or almost like, well, that's ridiculous. You need to, we need to build those people up. Yeah. You do need to build those people up. You want to know how you do that? You have a bigger perspective and you, you think of the narrative of an achiever. It's to be better. It's to be better. When you get better, most of those people around you become better. Oh, absolutely. Not all, right? But yeah. but most people. That's yeah. fuck, that's noble as yeah. hell. Absolutely. Which means winning is noble. It's noble. Like if you want to really help people in your inner circle, you really want to help people become better, then you need to become better. Uh-huh. And sometimes that means a separation to allow yourself to put yourself in a position to let them see what it takes to become better demanding that from yourself yeah, yeah and all those around you man yeah yeah like, no exactly some of those people who criticized me and I'm, I'm telling you man it had a huge impact on me like i was on a text thread of a bunch of buddies and when i started into the apartment space and, it, and i mean do you know people were just do you, know, do you know do you know how often i got blew up on that text thread you shitting me devil devil thinks he's an apartment investor he thinks he can buy apartment crazy. buildings all the time. Dude, do you know how often I text on that thread now? It doesn't exist. That thread does not exist. But you know what's crazy? Some of those people who criticize me on that thread now work for me. And that's not degrading to them. No. That's a, that's a shout out to them. They saw what it takes and they want to be around that. And now, now do you know what they're doing? Now they're becoming better. They're making those around them better as well, right? I love it. I love it. I love it. So what would you say to somebody that's trying to grow? It's trying to grow, mm-hmm. trying to have this energy and trying to stay motivated, but they're just not quite there yet. Uh, first, I'd say none of us are there yet. Yeah. No, right. Yeah. I mean, we're all on the path, but those who will get there um, are aware of the value that they bring. They're conscious of it. We've talked about this a whole bunch of times. But like you look back at even what we were just talking about. There's a lot of people who I, most people who criticize me, right, don't work with us. And why? It's because, well, first off, a lot of them have asked, but they don't belong. They don't belong because their energy is toxic. Their energy is toxic. So you you ask somebody who's looking to grow, but they're not there yet, dude, be conscious of your energy. Like one of the greatest ways to provide value is energy. Couldn't agree more. Energy is a currency that is absolutely critical to success. So if you take energy... Dude, you're the opposite of valuable, man. But if you provide energy, dude, you're the most valuable form of currency. It's like an ATM that's just freaking spitting out hundos, you know? It's tr- it's the truth, though. Yeah. You've worked with me. We've all worked with people. Everybody's worked with people that bring high energy into the office or the workspace or wherever it is, and you just want to surround yourself with those type of people and work harder and also keep your energy up to the even kill it to wherever they're, to wherever they're at. It's huge. Huge, I couldn't man. agree more. But dude, you know what? You know what? The, what's tough with that? You say my energy is always good. No, it's not, dude. No, it's not, man. Do you want to, once again because I'm in the grind, I'm in the struggle. But that is why it's so important to be conscious of your energy. And do you know what is is um, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, contagious is wanting to win, man. This will to win. Like you, you were just out at one of our at one of our boot camps. Uh-huh. 
in San Diego. In fact, all of y'all were out at the boot camp in San Diego. How was the energy in there? Incredible. Give it double thumbs up. It Incredible. was amazing. It, it was just awesome. was great. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to know why? Because everyone in that room wants to win. Everyone in that room wants to win. But to your point, what happens when they leave? That motivation often fizzles away. It, it, the, it sticks around maybe for a few weeks, maybe for a little bit. But if they're not constantly feeding it, it'll fizzle, it'll fizzle away. And it's it's not necessarily that they, they think they're unmotivated. I don't, I don't even know if I agree with that. They're uncertain. Yeah. They're uncertain because point. they don't know, am, am I working in the right direction? If you know that you're working in the right direction, you know that the path you're on is going to get you to where you want to be, uh, you you can keep your energy up, man, because you're working towards what you're looking to do, you know, yeah. like, w- which means this, like, you you call me with drama. Somebody calls me with drama, thinking they they think that they're telling me something that I need to hear, right? Thinking that they're providing value by informing me of this drama. No, negative. That's not the case. Like the most valuable person doesn't doesn't call me and tell me about the drama. They solve the drama. They solve the problem. That, do you want to know why? Because that allows for more positive energy. Yeah. So your question was, how does, that, how does that person who's trying to grow, how do they, but they're not there yet, do, they're aware of their energy, they provide energy, they provide value by solving problems, and, and dude, just providing energy, if that makes sense. No, totally. And that winning, that energy is necessary for winning. Yes. Necessary. Dude, winning it. requires energy for sure. Absolutely. But do you, I, I believe that consciously or subconsciously, maybe we're aware of that, but I, I believe the, the majority of people are, are unaware of that. Unaware meaning of the energy that they have and the energy that it takes to win, which is why they unconsciously deplete it. That doesn't mean that they're bad people. Uh, they're just bad for business or bad for winning, right? And when, but but here's the thing, when you, when you make that a priority and then you change your life, they're going to see it. They're going to understand it, man. They're going to recognize it. They're not going to think you're crazy. They're going to understand what it takes and they're either going to want that same energy yeah, or or they're going to, um, that, you know, I don't know, complain about it. Yeah. So short answer. So the question is, so the question is, what do you say to those people who are working to get that energy, but they're not just quite there yet? They don't have that motivation or that, that energy. They don't bring that energy into the workspace. How do they get there? Mm -hmm. The short answer is being conscious of your energy. Yes. Being conscious of what it is that you do bring to the workplace or to whatever team it is that you're on. Totally. That's the short answer. Yeah, dude. Correct? Most, yeah. Okay. And the most high level people that I've ever studied are very conscious of transactions happening within their energy G-bank. bank account. Yeah. Like, you think of your greatest mentors, your greatest mentors that you've had, are they, how was their energy? Was it positive or negative? Okay. Were they encouraging and supportive or did they criticize and judge, right? Ask then think about yourself. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, then you ask yeah. yourself, dude. Yeah, yeah. And how is your energy? How are you doing that? Yep. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So if your energy is your most powerful resource, as you're saying, it's the most valuable thing that you could bring to a workplace is your energy. How do you manage it? How do you be conscious of it and know kind of where it is and what energy it is that you're bringing to the workplace? But how do you manage that energy? And not just the workplace, dude, it's life. Life, man. yeah. It's your. It's yeah. everywhere you go. Like, totally. bro, I'm at the gym this morning and I'll answer that question, but I'm at the gym this morning and there's a couple, there's a husband and wife. They come in, they are, they're there every day, every single day. They walk in at 6 a.m. every day. It's It's clockwork. But you know what? Every time that they come in, they're waving at everyone. They're giving knuckles. They're just happy freaking people, man. It's everywhere. The minute that they walk in, there's more energy in that room. There's more energy in that room. And I'll tell you, when I go to the gym, I'm not necessarily the person that brings a lot of energy into the gym. Yeah, I have my headphones on and I'm like, I'm getting to on work. On a mission. I'm yeah. a, I am. I'm on a mission. But yeah. I, I got to tell you, I had a, like a funny experience where uh, there's a guy named uh, Rick. And Rick used to live out here and I used to work out with Rick. And I hadn't seen him for a little bit. And then he's in the gym. So I walk in, dude, and I, I see Jim and I like sneak up behind him. 
like give him, you know, a big old hug as he's like, I don't know, doing his chest flies. He's a big son of a bitch, too. He's tough <laughs> as hell. But he's, you know, we're, and, and all of a sudden, like he laughs and his son's there, too. And he laughs. And then everybody around kind of sees that. I had more people say hi to me that day than I ever wow. had before. It's interesting. Why? Because they want that energy, dude. Right. And I, I didn't yeah. consciously bring that energy in. It happened because I saw somebody that I was excited to see. Yeah. You know? So to answer your question, though, how do you... Uh, Real quick, though, from that experience, yes. realizing that that brought so much energy, you also realize that you can create that energy. Yep. It's not just something that just happens sporadically, but that you can consciously make the decision. I'm going to go give him a hug because I know that's going to just lighten the mood not for me not only for me but for him as well yep that you can actually create those moments and you think you had that experience you would think that what would i want to do when i go in the gym from now on find somebody to hug but i don't <laughs> i go in get yeah. my head down but yeah. can i tell you something though by the end of my workout because i go in early dude yeah and i'm i mean i'm trying to become my best self in the morning but <laughs> But when I walk in, I'm not always my best self. Yeah. I'm just freaking it's happy the to be there. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Proud that you're there. Yeah. 100%. So by the end, you're in a different state. So, so let's, which comes right into it. Yeah. Like, so how do you manage your energy? There's, you know, the most fundamental sources of energy are physical and emotional energy. So look at physical energy, right? Is it high or is it low? Okay. So to manage that, you have to look at your physical habits. How are you, how are you sleeping? How are you eating? How are you exercising? Those kind of things. Yeah. Yesterday, my energy was so low. You want to know why? Because I did not sleep well. Do, hold, hold on. I just said my energy is so low. And did you see Alex over in the corner like this? Yep. Yep. You keep, hey, you keep, you keep your nonverbal, you keep your nonverbal communication down over there. Okay. No, she's agreeing. No, she's agreeing. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it was, dude. I slept. I just slept horrible the yeah. night before. Yeah. And uh, I also didn't eat breakfast. And breakfast is key to me. Like I need to have a good breakfast. If I eat good breakfast, good day. Oh, it does. Good. So physical energy, right? Yeah. Look at your physical habits. And then you look at emotional energy. And this is a lot of people understand physical energy. They get it. They understand it, but they fail to understand emotional energy. And I mean, the far majority of people uh, fail to understand that. Is it positive or negative? And uh, I believe most people don't intentionally want to be negative. But once again, if you're conscious of it, you recognize it. Okay, so how to manage that. Look at how you're investing your emotions. And you'll, I know you'll relate to this, and we've, yeah. talk, we've talked about this you know, many times, but how much negative energy are you investing? This is, I, I believe, probably one of the most detrimental keys to, to uh, that gets people off track. If you, were to, if you were to ask me, where do people get off track? I would answer it this way. They, they look at where they're investing their emotions and usually they're they're investing negative energy towards frustration anger fear you look at fear bro i mean my gosh man you look at what we're going through in the world right now yeah. people are so scared of shit yeah you want to know why well i'll ask you why do you think people are so scared because they're uncertain yeah because they don't know how come they're uncertain? Because they don't educate themselves? I don't know. Or they do, but they're educating themselves with the wrong shit. That's true. What are they doing? They're watching the news. Yeah. And they're walking away and they're being like, man, I'm scared to death yeah. that I'm going to get shot when I go in this store. Yeah. I'm scared to death that I'm going to walk in this store and that person is not going to have a mask on and I'm going to get the Omicron. <laughs> is that what it's called? I don't know. I don't know what the shit it is. I know. You're going to get I'm, sick. Yeah. Well, oh my. How has that ever changed yeah. from any time in your whole life? There's a, all ever right or resentment for something or An another thing on fear just real quick yes, before we dude, move past fear in. i could talk about whole episode uh, no, i know you could another thing about fear though i think a lot of people not just with what's going on in the world i think a lot of people deal with fear because of uncertainty in themselves right we talk That's about we huge. talk about we talk about people all the time that come to these events that we have that are hesitant to take action and it's because they're scared most of the time it's because they're not confident in themselves and their own brain and making their own decisions. That's huge, bro. So it's under, understanding that part of fear as well, I think it's huge. Oh, like, dude, you just dropped a golden nugget right out of your b hole, bro. <laughs> like, that's so good, though, because it, it, it is. Like, you talk about inner circle, uh, you know, we've talked about inner circle, and you tie that into that. 
well, why are they scared? Well, dude, they want everyone wants to be on the right path, man. Right. And how do you know a lot of the times that you're on the right path? Well, you should know internally. But but if we're being honest with each other, we look for it externally. Do, do you want to know what's great about success, what's great about achievement, what's great about winning? Is you get recognition. People recognize it, and that feels good. It does. And so when you're on the path to success, on the road to success, you, you're not there yet, but you're looking to get there, and somebody doubts you or criticizes you, you're fearful that you're not in the right, going in the right direction. And that's tough, man. It is. That's it a is. tough thing to get over. That's why, like, but that's, once again, that's why surrounding yourself with people that are trying to achieve like you're trying to achieve yep. will help you through that, man. What you just said is absolutely critical. And if you missed it, if you're listening in the car and you missed it, if you're listening on the treadmill, good for you first off. Your energy <laughs> physically is going to get better. <laughs> but go back, rewind, man, re-listen. What Jackson just said is absolutely critical. I agree with that. Appreciate you it. have to be confident in yeah. yourself. And I'll, I'll tell you, you have to remain steady and focused and on track regardless of how you feel, right? Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. And how that happens is by knowing that where you're going is going to get you to where you want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Process. You know? yeah. so, so look at where you're investing your energy, right? Are you investing it in, in frustration? Like, and, and you, I know that you've heard, and you know, you know that this is one of my biggest pet peeves is when people call me, I talk about people call me with drama or people call me with frustration. And my first question will be like, what's the solution? Exactly. Did you call that person and tell them that? Then if you didn't, then get off my phone and yeah. go talk to that person. Or guess what I'll do? Well, you've already, you know what I'll do. What, what will I do? Three way I'm in. Patch them in. Hey, hold yeah. on one second, dude. Hey, got this person you were just talking shit on, on the phone. Go ahead and tell them what you were just saying. You said they're a whiny little bitch. Yeah, tell them. What were you saying? Tell them in more detail. Go ahead. Have I not done that you before? You have. Because it irritates me to death, dude. I, I, that back talking, that, it drives me crazy, man. But the reason you do that is because then it gets resolved immediately. Yep. And yep. then guess what that allows for? Energy. Uh-huh momentum yep. growth like good energy can come out of a situation like oh. that oh that's a, it, has there has it ever ended have you ever done one of those calls where you patch somebody in to take care of the solution and it not turn out good in the short term yep i mean in the short term people are pissed yeah sometimes people are pissed in yeah. the long term good it's always the best move no question always the best because it gets solved you it can only be solved if you address it at the head and i, pu I punched right close to the microphone hope you can hear that <laughs> knock it off at the head, you know? Like, yeah. so, so don't invest your energy into that. Instead, invest your energy towards something positive, growth, productivity, purpose. Yeah. Do you know what's purposeful? Solving that problem. Do you know what's purposeful? Having that tough conversation with that purpose. Or with, with that person, sorry. Yeah. That's purposeful. That is, that is now taking your, what could have been potentially negative emotional energy and investing it towards something that is positive, even though and it's a struggle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because once again, winning is a struggle. Growth is a struggle, but it's a struggle with purpose. Yep. And it, uh, a struggle with a positive outcome. That's every it. time that would, that kind of leads me to an, another question. But real quick though, yeah. before yeah, yeah, you yeah. Get, if, remind, remember that question, but you said a positive outcome all the time, but I want to clarify what that means because sometimes a positive outcome doesn't mean that just people recognize it and they get it and they change. No. But they, you recognize that they're never going to recognize it and get it and change. Yep. And then what do you do? Make necessary changes. Yes. Yep. That is positive all the time. All the time. All the time. So that leads that kind of, so it kind of sparked another question. Let's see if I can remember it. The other question being, let's say you don't take care of that drama. And you okay. just tell that person, yeah, 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 okay, whatever, 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 hang up. <laughs> and that and that drama doesn't get resolved. Uh -huh. You just kind of feed into it and you go back and forth, hang up the phone, and that doesn't get resolved. It doesn't get resolved and it's sitting just kind of in limbo. Lingering. Lingering. Lingerer. But, but it's n negative energy. Negative energy, just lingering. So how do... Worry. So, fear. So I guess it's not really a Frustration. Question. Resentment that that person called me. Resentment that that's on my mind. Envious of people who don't have it. So I guess it's not really a question, rather an observation. Is that negative emotion is just going to sit and going to continue to fester and continue to affect you negatively? It, yeah, I, I would say, is it going to sit and, um, because it's never just neutral. No. 
it's positive or negative. Mm -hmm. When we talk about neutral thinking, that allows you to shift into negative or positive. But if you don't solve it, then it's not just going to stay neutral. There is a cost of inaction. Absolutely. So that cost would be negative energy for sure. So, uh, so how do those experiences affect you negatively? Like the past stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I love that question. Hold on, I'm getting get a drink here. Hydrated. You've been talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> As per you. It's good stuff though. It's good stuff. You know, uh, the past is so important. It's so important to remember the past. You, well, you have to remember the past if you're going to create the future you desire, but it's what do you remember from the past and what do you learn from it, right? If it was negative, do you remember that negative experience from the past, learn from it? For example, this call, that because th there's been calls where somebody has done that and I haven't patched them in or I haven't solved the problem and it lingers. How do I so, so how how do how do I know to patch somebody in because I have made mistakes in the past where I haven't done that and it f's me over the rest of the day the rest of the week the rest of the time until I freaking solve it and fix it and move past it right or make sure that they do it you don't always have to solve everyone else's problems either by the way right right that'll also drag you down but you remember that you learn from it and you grow right so but I believe most people when they when they look at the past. They look at the past wanting to create this future that they desire, but they look at the past and only remember uh, bad things from the past and reasons that fuel their unbelief as to why they can't get to where they're going. Say that one more time. I don't know if I can. I don't know what I just said. Because that was so huge. They only look at the past and they, and they look at things that will fuel their unbelief as to why they can't get to where they're going. They'll look at said? those past. Yeah, no, okay. but in the little bit simpler words, they'll look at those. <laughs> They'll look at those past negative experiences as justifications on why they're not going to do it now. Yes. Yes, exactly. Why they can't get there. Right. Dude, the key, though, is remember the good stuff from the past, not the bad stuff. Right. And everyone, everyone has times that they have won. Even if you think, and you're listening to this, and you're like, no, I've lost a lot. You probably have. It's, but it's because, and if you can't remember when you've won, that's why you're losing. Remember a time when you've won. Everyone has done it. Everyone has worked towards something, achieved it, and been like, yes, dude. Yeah. I'll give you this example. When I was in high school, I, there's this big tournament. Well, you do. You, you know the Sunshine Tournament? <laughs> do I know Frick this? Frickin' A. Do I, I know the Sunshine? You lived yeah, down there. I know the St. George, yeah. Utah. Yes, Sunshine. Yes. I mean, that was... This is the best baseball tournament of the year. It is yeah. the best. Yeah. It, no in Utah, question. at least, yeah. It, it's yeah. right at the beginning of the season, right when spring is, you know, kicking off. And you go, tr we would travel down south, which is warmer than where we were coming mm -hmm. from up north. It was just a great tournament, man. And it was my senior year, which is an important year. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's your senior year. You want to freaking excel. Yeah. Well, I was not, dude. I was having the worst tournament I had all, bro. It was a rough Bad tournament. One. Well, let me tell you about first one of the year. You were knocking off, you were knocking off the rust, probably. Oh, a lot of rust. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. rough, dude. Yeah. And I'll never, I will never forget this because I'm in the, I'm in the. This is the either the championship game. Uh, no, it's a championship game. This is the championship game, senior year, and I am in the on deck circle, and there's this cop that I had a great relationship with, dude. He's a stud. He had a big, huge nose, and I cannot remember what the heck his name is now, but I obviously have a big, huge nose. That's why you can comment on his big nose. Oh, yeah, no big question, no, Big dude. nose gang. <laughs> we were brothers, dude. We were like, hey, big nose, big you know. What? <laughs> big smells, whatever. <laughs> He's a stud, dude. And I'm on the on-deck circle, and yeah. what do most people do when you're on the on-deck circle? You're looking at the pitcher, you're swinging. Well, do you know what I'm thinking of? Oh, my hell, please don't strike out again. For God's sakes, you've struck out. Well, I, the game previous, I struck out every at-bat I struck out. Oh, it was, dude, That's it rough. was rough, yeah. man. My family damn near didn't even come to the game because they're embarrassed to be there. You know what I mean? I guarantee that's not true. You have a very supportive family. They were very supportive. <laughs> but this cop comes by and he, this, he yells at me, Devereaux, Devereaux, remember last year? Remember the championship game last year? God, man, that was bitching. Because you want to know what happened the year before? Uh -huh. I hit a grand slam yeah, yeah, yeah. in the championship game to win the game. That's what I did. A grand slam. I didn't even know it was a grand slam, bro. I Because I, I was just focused on doing what I had to do in the moment, which is also a key. You focus on what you have to do in the moment. Right? Right. I didn't recognize the bases were loaded. I didn't recognize. I didn't. I got up there and I was like, I need to focus on this pitch, this moment, this right here. And, and dude, it slowed down. The game slowed down. And I hit a grand slam. And I come around. 
you know, obviously circle the bases, tipping my hat to all the ladies, all the, all the ladies Dis- in the crowd. Disrespecting the pitcher. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> and then they informed me that, you know, it was a grand slam. And I'd, I don't know if I'd ever hit a grand slam before. Lots of home runs, but never a grand slam. Yeah. It was a great time. Well, all of a sudden this cop comes by, and I feel so bad I can't remember his name, man. But he comes by and he reminds me of that at such a critical moment. A moment where, guess what? Bases are loaded again, dude. Bases are loaded again. And he reminds me of what I did last time in yeah. the championship game yeah. when the bases were loaded. And now instead of remembering all these strikeouts, I remember him remembering like, oh man, okay, what? That was bitching. Yeah. You know what, man? I remember when I got in the plate, I remember like things slowed down. Okay. I literally get in the plate. Or, sorry, the, the, get up the plate in the, in the batter's box. And it... The game slowed down. The pitcher throws this pitch, and I, I remember the ball that was like the size of it, just, it was just like they're pitching a golf ball all, all tournament. It was now all of a sudden the size of, of a basketball, and I remember just being like, holy shit, this is so simple. Hips, load, explode, <laughs> and I freaking crush it. And I think that I've hit another grand slam, but that mother bounced off the top of the fence and back in, dude. Okay. So I'm doing my home run trot. It was a double, I got a double, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got a devil. I thought I, I couldn't believe it didn't yeah. go over. But the point, I didn't strike out. Yeah. We won the tournament, not because of me. We were freaking actually killing it that game. But that was a winning moment for me. Yeah. Something that I that that guy helped me remember. I served a mission, and I remember on my mission, it, it, meaning I dedicated two years of my life. You know what a mission is, yep. but some of you maybe not. Dedicated two years of my life to go out there and teach about the gospel and just do service. And that was challenging, man. Challenging. Like, dude, I'll, I'll never forget these hard little kids. It's dead of winter. I'm in freaking Canada. It's cold as shit. And these kids start chucking rocks at us. Oh, no. And I was like, I'm a cool not person. Even, not even snowballs, rocks. Oh, rocks. Yeah. I'm a cool person. You don't, I'm a, you don't know this, but I'm cool. Like, you son of a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I kept a miracle, a miracle journal every single night. Every day, we'd come home, we'd write, in, I call it a miracle journal, I implemented it mission-wide, which was you documented miracles that happened that day, and then you had to report it back to everyone, we call it a district, in your district. Why? Because if you didn't, then it was very hard to focus on all the frustrating things that happened. But if, you, if you'd really take the time to sit down and document a miracle, and if somebody did not document a miracle, and I would get on the phone with them and I'd be like, dude, what was the miracle that happened today? Nothing. Today sucked. Well, you know, then you're not recognizing the small miracles in your life, man. Because yeah. there's lots of miracles mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. You have to look for them, though. You want to know why Dallas's journal is so impactful to so many people, myself included? Because what's the first and the last thing we do in the day? We write down what we're grateful for. Which is a miracle. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. Like, dude. That's, what, that's why it's powerful. So you remember the good things, what you're grateful for, what you do have, and that impacts the future on where you're looking to go. It's just like that very old saying, when you focus on the good, the good gets better. Yes, dude. Always. Yes. When you focus on the bad, the bad gets better. Magnified. It, it gets worse, right? The bad yeah. gets worse. So, dude, remembering that and keeping those, that, that you know, miracle journal it helped me remember why I was dedicating two years of my life to it. Now I look at experiences with the journal, right? This that daily journal that we keep now. And I'm, I'm looking at experiences with family members that we've had and students that have you know, come through the program, the impact that's had on their lives and the messages that they've sent me. And that helps remind me why I'm dedicating my life to those things, right? No, that's, so, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. So to answer, uh, just to wrap up that question, mm-hmm. how, do you, how, do you, how does that past energy affect you now? Or how can those other things that happen in your day-to-day affect you? How can that affect you now? And it's, it's as simple as focusing on the good. Yeah. It was much easier for you to focus on what had just happened, which was negative, when you're in that batter's box thinking of all these strikeouts from the tournament and how horrible you've been batting and that you're going through a slump. But instead, because this gentleman reminds you of how good you did, that became your focus. Yep. And because that was your focus, the bad got good. Can I give you one more example that yeah, I just absolutely. thought about? Yeah. Do you remember when we went to, I know you remember this, but we went to California. We took Grandpa Larry golfing for his retirement amazing. party. Yeah. Well, I noticed th- this is, and Mike, Mike, well, Mike's probably not listening to this. Mike's my little brother. I'll make sure he listens to this one. <laughs> or maybe not. 
Well, you know what? We'll see if he listens. Mike, you son of a gun. <laughs> He's probably one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. I love this dude. Great dude. But we're out golfing. And <coughs> Mike is a good golfer. He's way better than me or you. That's for sure. Yeah. He's a good golfer. And I, I remember it's first round, dude. And he putts and he misses it. Well, when I putt and I miss it, what do I say? God, my hell, I'm such a shitty putter. I'm not reading the greens today. I'm not good at this. Do you know what he said? Huh? Ah, oh, man, it's not like me. And I was like, whoa, what a difference, dude. That's not like you, which means that not winning was not like you. When so many times we look at them we're like, oh, man, I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not doing good. But in that moment, when you miss, to just be like, ah, oh, shit, that's not me, man. I'm a winner. I'm a fucking winner. Yeah. And I, it's not me. Now, how do I correct it? Yeah. And then you correct it. It's such, a, it's such more of a positive approach to your mistakes, oh, though, for yeah, sure. Yeah, that internal sure. dialogue. Uh-huh. Yeah. So important. So important. Ty, thank you. I think this is such an important uh, subject. I'm glad. I, this is one of the things that I've wanted to talk about for a while, and I'm glad we finally got the I opportunity love to it, sit man. down and chat about it. I think we should do some more episodes on this for sure. Love in the it. Future. Absolutely. No, I think this should be one that we, we definitely readdress. But as we're wrapping up, an aloha value. Aloha would be a good one for this one. But yeah. I know you probably have a different, better one. That would have been a good one. Shiz. I was thinking, you know, aloha is everything good. I yeah, love it. That's, yeah. But I, I was thinking malama, and I've done malama before. Uh, malama is the Hawaiian word for to care for and protect, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we've done this that one on here. Yeah. And a lot of the times I reference it to this. I'll say malama is associated with the phrase malama ka'aina, which means to care for the land. Dude, living out here, you know, like Hawaiians to this day, they just love, they love and preserve and protect the land. And if you don't do that, they they do not love and protect you right because they look at the land as their source of, of it's the source of our living you know and if we take care of it it will take care of us right well malama hanua means to care for everything to care for everything especially your community right your community so by living this your community meaning your inner circle and how do you care for your inner circle first you need to be somebody that has traits and characteristics and things that are um, aligned with growth because that is going to help them also grow and to care and put you in a position to care for and protect them. So by, by living, you know, Malama Hanua in every aspect of our lives, do we find ourselves, we find our purpose and meaning in our lives and we help other people do the same thing. So Malama Hanua, live that son of a bitch as we move into this 2022. And listen, you take 2022 by the fucking horns and you run with it. And when you get frustrated, when you when you struggle, understand that that's normal. And it's surround good. yourself with people. It's good. It's good. That means you're growing, yeah. man. And surround yourself with people that help you continue to grow. Do not surround yourself with people that are going to tell you that struggle is not what you should be facing. Yeah, it is, dude, because you're growing. Or baby you through those struggles. Yeah. You don't, <laughs> yeah. Want, those. You don't want those people. No. no. You want people to push you. Uh-huh. You need to be pushed. We all yeah. do. Me too. Help you overcome those struggles for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Ty, thank you so much. Thank you all for listening. Hey, rate, review, share, uh, and live always with Aloha. Peace.